Welcome, this is nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay and I am a registered pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. Really happy to be here with you this evening. And tonight's topic is going to be three-pronged. We're going to discuss diabetes. We're going to do a brief overview of diabetes. We're going to segue that into diabetes and obesity. And then we're going to go ahead and talk about an operation known as the gastric sleeve or also a um, maybe stomach operation, stomach shortening, various things that can happen when we're dealing with that. So when you watch this video, let me know what city, state, and country you're watching from. Please like it and share it with your friends, family, or anyone you know that could benefit from this information. Also, if you dislike this video, please let us know. We look forward to your comments and we want to address each and every one of them. We also want to let you know that no matter when you watch this, we want to help you out. We're here to assist you in any issue you might have, and there's so much we can learn this day in 2017. There's so many resources out there available for you no matter where you are in your healing journey. So again, the first topic we're going to deal with is diabetes, and I'm going to touch this briefly, and it's an overview, but what I want all of you out there to understand is the reason we develop diabetes is over time we've eaten so much sugar that our body has become desensitized to sugar, also known as the glucose that is in our blood, and the insulin in our body isn't able to keep up. So when you are first diagnosed with something such as diabetes, you, you will be originally termed as pre-diabetic, and what that were insulin insensitive, or your insulin has become desensitized. And when you find that happening, the reason is, is that there's been so much glucose in your bloodstream for so long that your body isn't able to keep up with it anymore. So one of the quickest things you can do in that situation is to decrease your sugar uh, consumption. And you can do that clearly by, of course, not eating a lot of sugar, but you can also do that by increasing the fiber and the fats that you eat with your sugar. So, for example, we used to have a joke that when we eat Snickers bars, we also eat a stalk of celery with it. And if you think about it, well, what would that do? Well, that would be eating the fiber. You'd be increasing your fiber. You're eating the Snickers bar. You're not dumping that huge glucose load into your bloodstream. Glucose causes a lot of problems if it's not taken out of the bloodstream. It will start it's a very large molecule and it'll start crashing into the smaller vasculatures of your body such as the eyes and the peripheral capillaries and that's why and also the kidneys and that's why a lot of diabetics will develop eye issues, neuropathy and nephropathy, kidney issues and it's because the glucose has been bombarding their small capillaries. So why does obesity seem to be a natural side effect of diabetes? Well, that results in the fact that people are eating, as we said, a lot of the sugar, these extra calories are getting into the body, and there's no, because of the nutrient deficiency in our current food supply, there's no sense of filling full. So the person will eat and eat and eat, and their body's not getting any sort of signaling that they're full because there's no nutrients in the, in the food to send the signal that causes a neurochemical cascade in your brain to say, I've had enough. So then you'll start seeing patients gain a lot of weight. And the other thing too is we eat as known as like, I like to refer to it as the macronutrient, I eat calories, so they're utilizable energy, but there's no nutrients in that caloric food, I eat the micronutrients the um, essential vitamins, the essential amino acids, the essential minerals that you need on a day-to-day -day basis, they're devoid in this food. So the entire electromagnetic cascade that happens when you eat these macro molecules, you know, eating food with no nutrients, there's no way for this entire process to finish. There's no way for the actual nutrients to get to the cells, and there's no way for the body to actually really efficiently break down these high caloric foods. So you will not be satiated, and you will constantly eat, and then um, that's gonna lead to obesity. And with any disease, when I'm working with anyone, I always encourage them, we always do wanna look at you know the mental, spiritual, emotional components 
of our well-being. So we always definitely want to look at our physical conditions and that's why we advocate nutriating. Yet we also want to look at things such as food addiction, which is equally as powerful as being addicted to any drug. The body has always liked food. We uh, naturally get high from it. And we do want to look at those kind of things when we're dealing with that. We want to look at behavioral, emotional factors that contributed to food because food makes us feel good. It definitely does. And, you know, if you're in the middle of eating a nice can of uh, Pringles chips right now and, and as the chips are heading, you know, a chip's heading towards your mouth or Cheetos or a big scoop of ice cream, I seriously doubt there's a problem on your mind when you're right before you're going to take that bite. So there's something very relaxing about food and those are things we all need to be paying attention to if we're dealing with things such as diabetes and obesity. Now one of the things that you'll see in the modern medical model is the uh, advocation of a surgery known as gastric sleeve. There are a couple of acronyms out there for it, but the main thing is that they end up uh, excising a portion of your stomach. They have different styles. Um, they might uh, say, uh, separate the stomach into two portions and then reattach the duodenum, which is the first part of the intestines, into another part of the stomach. And the logic is, is that there's less surface area for nutrients to get absorbed and it's going to cause weight loss. And yes, gastric sleeve surgery will definitely cause weight loss. And it will cause weight loss because you won't be absorbing any nutrients, number one, or any food, and you will naturally lose weight. You will also lose weight from it because you're recovering from the surgery, and that does take a lot of energy to recover from something that is a very messy operation, and things can easily go wrong in a gastric sleeve surgery. So when we're looking at something like that, we want to think about, first off, we definitely want to weigh our pros and cons. And the other thing we want to realize is that if we get something like this, we are now going to be committed to a liquid diet for the rest of our life. We're going to have to eat a very uh, series of very small meals for the rest of our life. We are at a huge um, disadvantage for a lack of nutrient absorption. And if you're somebody that's obese and also diabetic, you probably have already been having very decreased nutrient absorption. So getting a gastric sleeve surgery, you're just even putting yourself further behind the eight ball. There are a lot of other options. And what um, if you have had gastric sleeve, I want you to let me know below and I want to help you in any way I can with where you're at right now. If you're someone that hasn't had it yet, I want to give you a couple of options that you can do. Number one, you want you want to look at your diet. You want to change your diet. There's also a medication out there known as fenteramine, and there's been studies that short-term use, maybe six months of fenteramine, which is a um, a mild stimulant, you know, will help suppress the appetite and really nutriating. That would be the number one thing I would say to anybody in this situation is nutriating, getting the 90 essential nutrients, getting the trace minerals on board because they're going to find their food cravings immediately go down because of the fact that they've been technically starving for a very long time. And in this country, a lot of us know we have an obesity epidemic within our younger generation. We're seeing eight and nine year olds and I would see that as a, as a pharmacist doing bench work you know, eight to nine year olds that are, you know, 150 to 200 pounds overweight. And this is because those kids are literally starving. They are starving to death right before our very eyes. So that's just a nice overview of um, three very important things that our American culture is faced with on a daily basis. And I look forward to your questions and comments below. And again, I am here to be of service to you. And if there's anything I can do for you, please do not hesitate to reach out. All right. Thank you so much. Good night.